Hello, once again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Kevin Shortell Show. Do appreciate you listening to the podcast. And also, uh, don't forget, you can subscribe to that podcast. And every time we upload a new one, you'll get notified. I uh, talked with uh, Mitch uh, the other day, and uh, Mitch Steven, and uh, he is uh, working hard on, on getting me uh, the podcast that I'll share with you every Tuesday. So that one I'm going to schedule for everyone. It'll come out every Tuesday. Uh, what Mitch is really well known for and has written a number of books on is buying properties, fixing them up, and then selling with seller financing. So he ends up owning the notes. And of course, in doing that, he takes, him out of, uh, he takes himself out of that position of being a landlord and into just a uh, passive investor. And uh, he's done that over 1,500 uh, times. In fact, one of his books is uh, My Life in a Thousand Houses. So uh, Mitch is working on putting that together and we'll have that uh, launched. Hopefully, they told me next week we'll be able to, to do that. So uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be doing at least one additional podcast uh, per month. I'll try to mix it up a little bit. Sometimes it'll be uh, I guess what people are calling a solo cast now, where it'll just be myself and I'll be covering various topics. If you are looking for more content, uh, though, or note specific content, industry information, anything like that, uh, you'll also want to go to my website, uh, which is simply my name, Kevin Shortell. Uh, it's spelled T L E, so it's K E V I N. S-H-A-R-T-L-E.com. You can go there and uh, subscribe to that as well, but also check out the blog. And I do many videos uh, on there for you that are content rich. And I also uh, write blogs on there from time to time. Uh, in addition, I'm starting to part, post more videos on um, uh, my YouTube. And again, you can just search me on YouTube and you'll find my channel on YouTube. There's about 17 videos on there uh, right now. And um, there'll be another one because we're going to be adding this particular uh, podcast episode. I'll have the audio fashion for you, which you're, you're listening to now, but also uh, we'll have the full video to this because some of you may be interested in buying notes and I have a special guest who has notes available. So as we uh, progress through the interview towards the end, we will talk about some of those notes and uh, you may want to jump on YouTube uh, and, and check it out so you can see exactly what we're talking about, how to get to her website and, uh, and everything uh, else. So in addition to the solo cast, I will do what we're going to do today, which is uh, interview people that uh, I've met in the industry, have uh, become friends with, have trained and all, all of the above. And uh, I love hearing other people's stories. I love hearing uh, what they've been able to do uh, in the business. And this is a part of the, the industry that I think is so important, just hearing what other people are doing getting the flavor for the business and being able to uh, take those stories, take those lessons and apply it in your own uh, business. So I do have a special guest, as I mentioned, her name is uh, Deborah Clement. She's uh, calling me from, from uh, California and I'm in Florida here is uh, technology. Great. Hey, Deborah, how are you? Good, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing just, doing just great. We have one of those, uh, what do they call them? Chamber of Commerce uh, days going on right here uh, in, in Orlando. I'm sure your weather's pretty nice and, in uh, uh, California as well, because boy, they're going to get hit hard in the Northeast. <laughs> it's sure better than a lot of places in the country, but we've had a week of rain here, so. Really? Oh, yeah, well. we've, yeah. yeah, we've had a pretty good rain this week. <laughs> well, here you go. Ready for it to dry out. Good. Well, thanks for uh, for being on and, and, and carving some time out of your, your busy schedule. And uh, I've uh, interviewed your, your partner, as you know, uh, uh, Mark, uh, one of your business partners, uh, one of your several business partners, and, and uh, uh, he went through a couple assets as well. And I really love the story of how you, you all met and such, but perhaps we focus a little bit for the audience about how you got into this and really uh, part of your background in marketing I'd like to get into as well, because I think that's going to be really important in 2019. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that and then we'll focus right on the marketing. Sure. So uh, my basic background is in advertising. I've been in advertising and marketing for the last 30 years and owned a direct mail advertising company for 18 of those last 30 years. I was working a lot of hours and I was territory based. So all of my business, not all of it, but a big portion of my business was here in Southern California. And I realized as the older I get, um, I wanted to do something to where I wasn't uh, landlocked into a, a specific area. I knew real estate was the industry I needed to be in to actually um, build my wealth over time so that I didn't have to go to work every day to get a paycheck. 
Uh, in 2010, I met my current business partner, Mark, at a uh, networking event. It actually was a business mastermind group that we were both uh, involved in. At the time, he had just sold his business. He had a chain of tanning salons, and I was still very active in my business. Mm -hmm. um, but we kept with a mastermind uh, weekly mastermind call with four other people uh, and kept that up through uh, 2015 is when I ultimately sold my business. I started taking care of my parents. Uh, they got sick, and I uh, wasn't able to work, uh, you know, the eight to ten hours a day that, that I was used to working. So when, we, when I was looking for another business to get into, um, Mark had uh, learned from, I think, his RIA group a little bit about the note investing business, and we explored it together and went to some classes, learned a little bit about it, and decided to open Equity First Funding. Um, the main reason was for wealth creation, wealth building, and we both wanted to build passive income for the next 30, 35 years uh, mm -hmm. of our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's also unique, everybody, is uh, most often you think when business partners or partners in business, you have to be in the in the same room, the same office, and and uh, the same city and everything else. But uh, you guys are on opposite coasts. Um, we are, yeah. I'm in California. Mark is in Maryland. And, uh -huh. um, you know, it works really well. Actually, his understanding of the East Coast market has helped us a lot. Um, I am from Southern California. Most of my business has been in Southern California. I had no idea that you could buy a house for $50,000 in any <laughs> part of the country. You couldn't buy a dog house in Southern California for $50,000. So you could imagine my surprise yeah. when uh, I started learning about the real estate markets in, in in other parts of the country. And, and I'll, I'll tell you the truth, Kevin, uh, Mark really had to talk me down off the ledge a few times because um, I wasn't used to seeing the types of properties that, mm -hmm. um, you know, 100, 120 year old homes uh, just wasn't in my wheelhouse. So, to right. speak. so it was really helpful to get his perspective. And he'd been in real estate uh, earlier than I got involved in real estate. So um, it was yeah, very cool. helpful. Quick question yeah, on that. So how, how do you guys, because um, we might have people who go, well, I'd love to do business with somebody else, but they're not. How do you keep, uh, you must have a regular scheduled uh, uh, conference calls or, or how, how do you just communicate through computers or emails or just through calling or what? Right. So we have uh, twice a week, a regular, regularly scheduled call. Um, I get up early and Mark goes to bed late. So it works really well. <laughs> So on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, we have a, a scheduled 7 o'clock Pacific time uh, call. And then we talk to each other throughout the week when we need to, when we have to address things. Uh, we yeah. do a lot of texting. Uh, but our scheduled calls work well because it, when we have to speak to vendors or um, other people in the marketplace that we need to deal with, we usually try and schedule those calls around our previously scheduled standing calls. Right. Uh, which works well because whether they're uh, most of the time, if there are most of our vendors seem to be on more on the East coast or, or central mm -hmm. time zone. So it works out better for us because that's, they've already started their day and they can take our calls pretty much at 10 o'clock in the morning yeah. for Pacific time zones. We'll wait until, so we'll start our calls at seven Pacific. And by the time we get ready to finish our calls, it's eight o'clock Pacific. And most of the vendors are open by that time. Yeah. No, I think that's a great way to do it because I, I know case, cases of other people that have tried to do business with other folks and even in, in uh, you know, the same state but different cities. And I think they've, right. they've failed uh, uh, several times because they don't have that discipline of we just have to schedule a call and be on it every single time. It became I'll call you when, when we need to. And, and that, that never works. I think you're doing it. Uh, great and doing it the, the right way and and uh, I, I, I like it too and business partners um, have uh, some similarities um, some co common strengths uh, together but also different and I think you kind of pointed that out as, as, as well uh, and I think those make the best partnerships in, in uh, business there so excellent well let's move on and talk about um, I, I want to expand upon your you come from an advertising background and um, so obviously uh, marketing and, and, and things like that fall into your, your wheelhouse but personally as well. And I, I, I was talking with a mutual a friend of ours, uh, Dave in, in Arizona, who you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, Dave is finding in his marketplace because he's kind of shifted into uh, 
real estate and notes now, but he has found that marketing is really, really, really critical in, in his area uh, right now and believes it's going to be the same way moving forward because deals are getting a little harder to find and, and, and that sort of thing. Are you finding the same thing and how does your background in, in uh, advertising help you uh, with that? You know, the way I see it, uh, Kevin, is marketing is primarily, advertising and marketing is about exposure, right? So everything that I've done in my past has taught me that the, the person that gets the deal, the person, the business that gets the business is the one that has the most exposure of their business to the industry. Mm -hmm. Whether it's being direct mail marketing or social media or uh, online marketing or anything like that, uh, you want to get your brand out and you, and you definitely need the exposure. You want to be top of mind to the people in your industry, even like what you're doing. When you're going to real estate events, you're doing speaking tours, you're educating people. Marketing follows, I believe, falls into that main bucket of exposure. Um, I believe Dave is doing some meetups. That's more exposure, more uh, education. What I've found through the three years that Mark and I have owned this company is that the more people we may meet, the more networking we do, um, the more exposure we get. The more exposure we get, we get exposed to more uh, deals. Uh, deal flow and we also get exposed to more buyers once you get exposed to those kind of buyers they have friends they have family and it moves out that way if you're looking to buy notes um, certainly direct mail is a great way to do it uh, and so is online uh, ways to to get people to sell you their notes but if you're looking for investors to either purchase your notes or things like that my my feeling is that working through networking and real estate events uh, are the best ways right now that we've found to do that. Certainly, meetup groups are a great way to find um, investors, both passive and active investors. Mm -hmm. um, and that, in my opinion, that all falls under the, the category of marketing. Yeah, it's um, you, you made some good points. I hadn't, hadn't really thought about, but it does touch, especially in the note business. I, uh, you're, I agree with you 100%. Um, you do have to market yourself within the industry and it does open up all kinds of doors and directions that you had never thought of because this industry isn't, um, uh, which I've seen in real estate sometimes, directly competing. Uh, with other people or they don't want to share things with you because we're doing this on a, a national basis. I mean, some people have notes. They want to sell notes. Some people want to buy notes. Uh, they can recommend third-party service scheme companies, uh, uh, handymen, all those sorts of things. So you certainly have to market yourself. Um, and um, you're right. Uh, we've got to market uh, people who have notes looking to sell. We have to market notes. That, I mean, so it's really all over the place in, the, in this industry. And um, uh, by the way, also everybody, um, Deborah is going to be uh, writing a chapter in the uh, uh, upcoming book. So you've uh, heard me on other podcasts talk about the book that is uh, coming together. Uh, in fact, I just emailed Deborah about that. I've, now I've got to cut down on, on all the words <laughs> that I have. I've got about 60,000 words on, on paper now, and I'm, I'm kind of cutting that back, and I'm adding in some other chapters and such. And, and uh, uh, Deborah and Mark at Equity First Funding are going to be in that book as well, writing a chapter. Um, so you'll make sure you want to get a hold of that book. I'll keep you posted when it uh, when it does come out. And uh, again, another great way to, uh, to get exposure and and um, you know you, you become and what you what you have your whole company has and and um, becoming known in the and known in the industry and, and having available inventory and part of what I I just did a um, video blog the other day uh, where I talked about buying partials and I know we're going to talk about that here in in a little bit <clears throat> but I did a little segment on that about seven or nine minutes or so uh, on the blog and. Um, uh, it's it's a um, the, in my opinion the easiest way for people to get involved in the uh, in the note business and um, you know you've got um, you've got some notes and such that we're going to look at that uh, do that um, the power of partials then so in in marketing that if you have notes that you're you're looking to sell let's say which I, I know that you do but um, one aspect that I, I'd like you to give us your, your thoughts on um, and compare to mine, which is for somebody who's new, and I know you run into people like this, they're, they're new, they have capital, they want to invest, but they, they don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, I think buying partials is, is the way to do it. And uh, is that something you're looking to do more of uh, this year? Um, 
Yeah, absolutely. It is. And I, and I agree with you, Kevin, because there are a lot of people that don't have time in my professional life, going back to when I owned my direct mail advertising agency for 18 years, mm -hmm. I had a lot of cash flow. We had a lot of money coming in, but I didn't have anywhere to invest it. If I had somebody come into me and I knew real estate was something that I really wanted to be invested in. I bought a couple of uh, condos in Las Vegas during that period of time. I also bought a condo here in, um, in uh, Rancho Santa Margarita, which is in Southern California, right by me. But I didn't understand really how to buy real estate. I just knew I had a lot of money coming in and I needed to throw it out there. Mm -hmm. Had anybody come up to me at that point and educated me about buying notes, um, which I love being a note owner much bit, much more than being a landlord. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody had come and educated me on, on the potential of getting involved in this industry, at that time, I didn't have a lot of time to look at anything other than my business. I would have been completely 100% um, uh, into it because what, the, what partials allow you to do is it allows you to invest in real estate, invest in the security of real estate, but only have a, a um, uh, have by a certain period of time, let's say if you have a 20-year note, I would be able to go in and buy 10 years of that 20-year note and have the investor that owns the backside of that note um, actually be involved in the deal with me continuously so that if anything happened, I wouldn't have to take the time. Like Mark and I have taken the last three years to learn, you know, not only how to buy notes, but how to get out of notes that aren't performing and, and what to do in case they stop performing. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of education that at the time I owned my direct mail advertising business, I didn't have the time to do. So partials are a great way for investors that don't want to be 100% active and learn the business the way that we have. Um, to to benefit from the security of real estate investing without having to take all the risks risks themselves or having to take the time to educate themselves. Yeah, and and that's you know it's it's hard in in today's economy right now. It's hard to imagine a better investment than a secured note, and by extension. Uh, just a partial on a note, because just to put some numbers to what, what Deborah was just saying, uh, just a, uh, for clarification, if you have a house that's worth $100,000 and, and they have a $60,000 uh, note on, on it, um, uh, you know, maybe the property values have gone up and that note's been, uh, been uh, the borrower's been making payments on that for a couple of years, it's got some seasoning behind it, and you just come in and buy five years of the remaining, whatever it is, 20 years on that note, you're, it's, it's hard to go wrong. I mean, especially if, if you're working with someone like Equity First and Deborah, it's a company that you can trust. These are notes that they personally own, and they're just selling a little piece of that note to you. They still have a vested interest in that note performing because they're now in a position behind you. So you have a very highly secured, if you just came in, let's say, for twenty five grand and bought X number of payments, and it's backed by a $100,000 house, it's hard to imagine a safer investment and <clears throat> all of the notes I think too are professionally uh, uh, service so I, I know all of yours are Deborah but you you want to work with people who are professional servicing companies because all they have to do is switch that toggle switch over to you and now you start getting those uh, uh, those monthly payments so you can make a a high yield but it's secured and in today's environment I mean you compare that to the stock market or bonds or, or just sitting on cash and there, there's there's really no comparison uh, to it right most of the and, and like I've said over the years of my professional life most of the investments that I've made have been a lot riskier than real estate and that's why I knew <clears throat> that moving into my retirement age that I wanted to get involved in real estate. Um, in 2006, I bought my first rental property. I didn't understand notes. It, this was a segment that, or an industry that I had no idea even existed. <laughs> I know. Up until probably 2015. So, yeah. um, but it's a great way to invest in real estate uh, without having to be um, a landlord uh, or partials. It's a great way to get the security of real estate. Uh, without having to do all of the education or take the 
risk yourself of, of potentially losing that investment. Right, right. Well, let's do this. Um, I, I have the website up, so everybody listening to the audio, once again, you can go to YouTube. I'll have it posted there, and you can see the full video uh, on, on uh, the YouTube channel as well. But we'll be as descriptive as we possibly can for those just listening to the audio. But uh, So what I've done, I've logged into their website, which is just equityfirstfunding.com, equity firstfunding.com and uh, it's really easy to navigate through right notes for sales uh, if you have a note that you're looking to sell uh, and also some properties uh, that they have articles and, and such on there so I'm going to notes for sale at equityfirstfunding.com and uh, they have, uh, do you have do you have a ballpark of how many notes are on here now you know we usually range between 40 and 50 notes uh, at any given time I I would imagine we're pretty close to 40. We had uh, one of our borrowers that um, we were notified yesterday that is paying off, so that note will come down. Great. Awesome. They selling the house or refinancing? or They're selling the house. Selling the house, yeah. Yeah, refi loans are, are on the downswing again, so kind of interesting. People see the interest rates go up a little bit, and all of a sudden they're like, what? But that's great. Let's take a look at one. I know you had uh, sent me uh, this one. I think this is the one here uh, on Bouquet in, in Youngstown, Ohio. So again, let me just set this up, everybody. Deborah's in Southern California. Her business partner is over in Maryland, and this is a note in Ohio. Again, that just shows you how this industry can operate and work. You don't have to live there. You guys didn't fly out and see this property. They have boots on the ground. Uh, so they purchased this note uh, after doing all of the uh, due diligence and um, I'll let you talk us through it here. So it's a 2,800 square foot home, four bedroom, one bath, and um, I'll click on details. Is that where you want me to go? Yeah, please go, okay. go ahead and click on details. Now, not all of our notes make good partial investments. Um, this one does, and we'll be, we're kind of massaging our website a little bit more, so I'll be adding a button on there eventually that will say partials, and then when you press on that button, the partials will come up or the notes that we have on the website will come up that uh, make good partial candidates. Great. If you scroll to the top of that, Kevin, we've also put an online value estimator on the notes. Um, most of the online um, estimators that, that I have found bring this property in anywhere between $75,000 and $105,000, anywhere in between there. Hmm. I haven't put a recent BPO on it, but you can see that the note, uh, the initial loan amount was thirty two eight. And the current UPB is 27189 So it's a very secure uh, investment. Okay, this so part, we have a property that's worth about 75000 on the low estimate. Correct. And they, uh, they only owe, what you just said there, the unpaid balance, that's what the principal balance is at this time, 27000 bucks. So they've got a lot of equity in this property. And when you see a lot of equity in, in properties like this, everybody, it's much, much, much harder for this person to walk away. I mean, they're not going to walk away from fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of, of equity if things go wrong in their life. They would turn around and and uh, refinance. They would do something to keep that equity uh, in their home, so that builds in some some safety right there. Um, how long have you owned this note? So we bought this note in January. This borrower is a very solid borrower. He pays every month. We've had no problem with him whatsoever. Oh, I see it right here. I'm sorry. So you just bought this uh, note? Uh, no, I just added that to what I've done is I re... Uh, I, got <laughs> I got you. You added it to the website. So you bought it in, in January yeah. of 2018 then? Correct. We oh, okay. bought it in January of, tw of 2018. Um, uh, okay. And we've held the note. He's a good, solid performer, and he's got a remaining term of uh, 136 months. Mm -hmm. On this particular note, we're interested in looking for a partial buyer who wants to buy anywhere from eight to 10 years on this okay. note. And we would be offering uh, between an eight and a nine percent yield as a return for the for depending on whether they wanted to buy an eight year partial term or a 10 year partial term. Gotcha. Okay. So again, if you, everybody, if you could kind of visualize in, in your mind, uh, next month's payment and then behind that another 135 payments remaining, what they're offering is to sell you a portion of those payments. Now, a couple of things as a note investor myself that I would be looking at, I'm going, I'm totally safe on this investment if it's worth uh, at a minimum $75,000. 
it, you know, it, I, I'm, I'm very, very safe. That's something we call our investment to value ratio. So if I'm um, uh, buying eight years of payments, did you have a number on what that would be? The 26,000? Uh, Is yeah, that the number? So, yeah, close. I, we've got it at, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I do have my notes here. Uh, 20, about 23,640 would be a 96 month partial, which would be eight years. Okay. Uh, 26,083 would be a, a, a 10 year partial. Okay. So you're somewhere around a $23,000 investment um, back by. 26. 26? Uh, $1,000. 23 to 26, depending gotcha. on the amount of years. Okay. Right. So if you're, uh, you're investing uh, 23 grand, eight years, you're going to be receiving monthly payments of $336 and your investment is backed by a property that's worth $75,000. And on top of that, they've got a year's worth of uh, seasoning on this, uh, on this note. Was this full performing when you bought it or was this a non performing that you got reworked or? No, full performing when we bought it. It had two years of seasonings prior to us buying it with an excellent pay history and the pay history has been uh, perfect spot on since we've owned it. Right. Okay. So two years of seasoning, two years of payments made on time before uh, they bought it, another uh, year of payments. So there's really three years of documented seasoning, a monthly payment history uh, on this property. And again, it's just illustrating the points that we were talking about earlier. It's a safe investment. It's going to be a passive cash flow. Um, you have a third-party servicing company that's collecting the payment. So just explain to everybody, if they came in and bought eight years or 10 years of payments on this note from you, how would that work for them? How involved would that whole process be uh, for them? So what we would do is we would make sure that the NDA was signed. So first of all, anyone going to our site would go under note investing, become an investor, sign an NDA, give us a little bit of background uh, about themselves, about their um, uh, note investing history, about uh, you know, what they're looking for, uh, what their tolerance levels are, um, and then once that information comes into us, we would send them the due diligence files on any of the notes that they are interested in that would make a good partial investment. Okay. Uh, so that they're so the, the due diligence folder she's talking about, everybody, is the paperwork, right? So this is a contract for deed. So they'd be able to send you the contract for deed, probably have a, a written payment history that you would send as well, and, right. and a, a title report if you have it, uh, uh, possibly a BPO. Uh, BPO is probably a year old or so. Uh, in this case, but all the documents that back this deal is what she's talking about for the due diligence. And very good, And if you're looking to buy a note from somebody and they don't ask you for an NDA and they're not providing documentation, you've got yourself a problem, okay? You do. So uh, Deborah and Equity First Funding is doing this the right way. They have a non-disclosure, so you're not just floating these things out there. They'll, they want to know about you so they can, you know, guide you to the proper assets. So it's a great fit. So you're not wasting your time. They're not wasting uh, their time uh, as well. And once you show an, an interest uh, in a particular note, then they'll give you the, the uh, documentation. Okay. Take it from, from there. So they've got their documentation on this and let's say, uh, they're like, well, as I would be, I think on this one, I'm just going to kind of check off our seasoning good. I'll, I'll do some quick evaluation on the property myself to see if I, I agree with your value numbers. And, um, uh, you know, after that, I probably uh, then I'm just going to crunch some numbers and say, well, heck, where else can I make a secure 9%, 8% return, whatever it comes out to. Um, and I want to proceed. What would the process be there? So then they would reach out to us and we would, uh, type up the, the agreement and the partial agreement just says that you take ownership of the, of the uh, note and the deed for the next either eight or 10 years. We do the assignment paperwork. You uh, would wire the money in and we would, um, you would start receiving the payments as of the day that the contract says you start receiving the payments. Mm -hmm. The servicer would stay the same, so it literally is just a, a, a toggle switch. The payments go from equity first funding uh, this month, next month, Kevin, you would start receiving the payments. It's all done by the same servicer, and it's, yeah. it's just that easy. Yeah, and I know people are especially 
again, if they have some kind of a real estate background, their idea of closing a transaction, they carry into the note business, but it can't be further, <laughs> further apart. Um, and you've seen me teach in, in class and such before too, where I tell people, look, you're buying a note. There's not even anything for you to sign. It's um, personal so that, property. Yeah. What's that? It's personal property. Exactly. And, and so the closing, you're not, you know, if somebody were to buy this from you, which they should, by the way, this is one of those notes that's like, I mean, come on. Uh, this is a great, uh, great note with a great performing asset and backed by every, everything. So, um, again, do your own due diligence, everybody. But if you bought this note and you told them, hey, I'm ready to go on this, the closing is very, very quick because they have all the documents in-house. Uh, they, they get everything signed to you. Uh, it's already at their uh, party servicing company. And, uh, again, you just start making payments. So this whole excuse of, well, how much time is it going to take me to do this and that, it really, on deals like this, does not take you all that amount of time. But what if, Deborah, somebody had um, some concerns, it's their first note, and, you know, they live in, in Georgia and they're looking, you know, I don't know, the Ohio market. What if they wanted to get a, a BPO on their own? How would you handle that? Absolutely. Well, we, we can either get a BPO for them um, or, you know, certainly the BPOs that we get might be less expensive than the ones that they're able to get because we usually buy BPOs in, in bulk. Mm -hmm. So if they wanted us to secure a BPO, I think it's about $100. Uh, for us to secure a BPO. If we don't have a current title report and they wanted us to secure that, it might be another $100, $125. We'd be happy to secure those for you. Um, and then that might take a week, Kevin. It might take uh, 10 days. Mm -hmm. We'd have the documentation and, and we'd be ready to go. Yeah, and same thing with uh, title reports, right? If they wanted to get an additional uh, title report, just to make sure there's no other claims or liens that might have uh, gone on there, they still have but we have no problem with that. Yet if they choose to. Right. We have absolutely no problem with that. What we would do is we would hold it under contract uh, for, you know, a 10 day waiting period while, while those two reports are being run. Great. And um, I can just tell, you know, everybody also, I know when they bought this, they have done all of their due diligence, you know, so you, you do have a little added benefit with that. But we always tell everybody, look, check the numbers yourself, you're comfortable with it, uh, they're easy, easy to work at. So that's just another great note. And, you know, I, I haven't looked at your site in a couple of weeks, but uh, boy, you, you really have some really, really good notes on, on here. You know, and, plus you want to remember the back end of this thing is we still own the back end of this. So when your eight year or, or 10 years is up, uh, we're going to make sure <laughs> That, that we don't have title issues. We're gonna make sure that we don't have BPO issues. I mean, we're, we're gonna make sure that this continues to be a solid performer because when we get the asset back, we want it in good shape. Yeah, and somebody might be asking, um, why would you just, sell, why would you want to sell a, a partial? You know, it, that's really super simple. It's just our business is buying and selling notes and that's what we've always intended to do. That's how we make a living. So recapitalization is always important. So, and building long-term wealth. So we can recapitalize this note, go out and buy another note. And in 10 years, when this note reverts back to us, uh, we'll start collecting on that note again. So it's just recapitalization. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great way to go. So it's, it's truly win-win. It's a great opportunity for an investor coming in. But believe me, there's a benefit to Deborah and the folks at Equity First, which is just what she said recapitalize, buy additional notes, and as time passes, uh, after you receive, let's say you bought 80 payments, what, I think it said 80, but whatever it is, eight years of payments, after you receive that last payment, then the payments go back to, back to them. Um, so it's really a win-win uh, situation. All right, let's take a look at uh, another one here. I think you said you had a, a non-performing uh, note. Uh, so I'd like to take a look at, at that okay. one. That's St. Clair and Jackson, uh, Michigan. Oh, great. Super. It's right next to it. Perfect. Yeah, I, yeah, I lined oh. them up for you, Kevin. Oh, did you? Oh, thank yeah. You. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, right there. I know. I remember with uh, Mark, I was hunting around looking, uh, looking for it. Uh, okay, so this is in, um, oh boy, I think I, I looked at this one myself, I think. Jackson. Beautiful property. Yeah, the, the property is beautiful. The online estimates on the property are beautiful. It's, uh, we bought this property or this note back in uh, January of 2018 as well. Uh, interesting, interesting case. Um, actually, uh, I was 
I was toying with the idea of put this, putting this on a sub-performing uh, list rather than a non-performing list because she has a habit of um, not making payments and then when we send out a notice of default, uh, catching up real quick. And this has kind of gone on. This is the second time this has gone on. Um, when we bought the note in January, she did not make her first payment to us uh, until May of um, that same year. So May of last year, we sent out an NOD. She made her, she caught up in June. No, I'm sorry. She caught up in May. She made her June payment and then stopped paying again. So she hasn't paid in about seven months. My feeling is she's going to, and we did send out an, another NOD, uh, which she did not respond to. So we sent it to legal. So we're in the process of foreclosing. Um, the house is gorgeous. It's valued high. She has a bunch of kids. I doubt seriously that she's going to want to move out. My, my feeling is that what's going to happen is once the, she gets the um, notice from the court, she's going to call her attorney and get us get performing again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't, Mark and I talked about it. We felt that we could offer it as a non-performing note uh, without having to go through loss mitigation or legal, all, all that, and recapitalize and move forward and let somebody else that wants to deal in non-performing notes either foreclose and take the property or get her re-performing again. Gotcha. So that's why I put it on a non-performing list is, um, you know, she is t technically non-performing. Right. But gotcha. I do believe that she won't be non, I, I do believe that her intention is to stay in the home. Right. So for, for everybody listening, big difference here as an investor with performing notes and non-performing notes. So the last one that we just looked at was a performing note. And again, we talked about how that's, that's an easy process. Check the box on the valuation, look at the documentation run your numbers. And then when you purchase, it's a very quick closing. You receive the, the payment starting next month. Okay. Non-performing notes require workouts. These notes are broken. The, the people aren't making the payments on, on this note. Um, so typically, again, you can buy these notes cheaper because they are broken and you just have to set up your, your workout plans. And based upon what Deborah was saying, once again, I know she's a highly trained professional in this and you start to get a flavor for what is likely to happen here. So she mentioned sometimes they pay, she's falling behind again, but has children, the children go to school in that area, they have friends in that area, they probably want to stay. Um, the, I'm looking at the monthly payments here of $323 a month. What do you think that house would rent for? Probably about six or $700 a month, Kevin, I'm assuming. Okay. So about twice, the, the rent in that area is about twice what her monthly payment is. So you start kind of figuring the, the math here and you're going, what do we need to do to help this person? Well, um, what Deborah also said is we're, we've initiated, she said NOD. So for those of you wondering what that was, notice of default. So they're sending an official letter through their servicing workout company, letting them know if you don't catch up right now, we have formally started the foreclosure process. It doesn't mean the house has been sold at foreclosure. The foreclosure process has been initiated. Um, Sometimes you have to do that to wake people up. And um, what if, so your, your scenario was you don't think she's going to uh, um, lose the house. She'll lawyer, get a lawyer and hopefully uh, come to some kind of an agreement um, to do another loan modification, uh, uh, something along those lines. But worst, worst, worst case scenario would be that you do have to uh, end up foreclosing. Uh, off the top of my head in Michigan, that's judicial. I can't remember. I don't know that. Kevin. I'd have to look that up. <laughs> okay, so you, you might have to go through a foreclosure process here, but if this house is worth, um, did you? 70, something like almost $70,000. Again, $70,000 and your invested for 34.4. The house does look at least on the outside in, in great shape. And my just general rule of thumb is always the outside reflects the inside. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that the house is in, in good shape on the, on the inside. And, you know, 
investing in non-performing notes, you have to look at that best case scenario. You send another letter to, uh, you buy this note, you send a letter to the person willing to do some kind of a, uh, a workout. I don't know if Michigan still has hardest hit funds uh, available, uh, but they do have some other programs. Maybe there's a program that this uh, could help this person out and uh, get the note working again, or worst case, you have to take the property back. Once you own the property, a lot of things you could, uh, you could do. Uh, in fact, you could sell it and create your own note, uh, right, and, and, and do that. So how long have you owned this one? The same. We bought, we bought it in January of 2018, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the second notice of default that we've had to send her, but the first notice of default she cured. Now, she is uh, self-employed, so we figure that that may have caused her uh, and she owns a landscaping business. I'm not sure how much landscaping is done in the winter months in Michigan. So, um, but we need her to start talking with us, right? So we sent out the first NOD in May. She, she uh, cured. We sent out our second NOD uh, notice of default a few months ago, which she did not cure. And that's what prompted me to put it on the, the non-performing list. But it is my contention that come the springtime when she starts working again, uh, she might find the money to cure her default and that and you know that's really all all we want when we look at non-performing notes um we really would prefer working them out i know some people would really rather take the property back and right. and, and and sell the property that way that's never been our strategy um actually our strategy was to buy complete always buy performing notes but this industry that it doesn't always work out or perform mark likes to say we never have intentionally bought a non-performing note mm -hmm. So um, my feeling is that she's probably going to cure. Um, but if she doesn't, we're selling this note for less than 50% of the value of the property. So we feel that that is excessively, um, ex exceptionally doable as far as um, um, any exit strategy for a non-performing note that, that an investor may want to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my thought on this would, would be, well, if you've already filed the notice of default, unless Michigan doesn't allow it, which I, I don't think is the case, I'm sure you guys would be willing to uh, assign over foreclosure position. Um, so somebody, you know, you're already, if you, if, if I bought this note and then I was able um, to get that assignment of foreclosure position from you, I can take over where you all left off. Um, so I won't have to refile again, that sort of thing. And I can just proceed. And even though that's not, and I, because I agree with you, I think you, you're better off working uh, with these folks for reasons that you've you've stated. But sometimes, you know, you you have to move that foreclosure forward to ramp up the uh, momentum and the pressure. So they say, hey, I do want to work out something. We do want to stay in the home. And I don't know why, but some delinquent borrowers like this, they they turtle up. You know, they just don't know what to do, and they don't want to communicate. Um, I don't know, don't know why, because that's the worst thing they can do. I'm sure if they called you and said, Hey, look, you know, give us a couple of months and, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be able to start to pay working again. We'll, we'll be able to catch up on some payments and, and you guys would be willing to work out something today, right? If she absolutely. And that's always been our goal is just talk with us and let us help you work through it. You know, the one que the two questions we ask is, do you want to stay in the home or do you not want to stay in the home? If you want to stay in the home, we will do everything in our power to, to help you stay there. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to stay in the home, let's just, let's just, you know, take away the pain and move along. Yeah. But when have a borrower you... won't communicate, then we have to proceed with foreclosure. And like you said, to get them to start communicating with us. Mm -hmm. And again, everybody that brings full circle back to marketing. I mean, you've got to market to these folks and somehow let them know, look, we're not the enemy. <laughs> we're, we're here to help. And actually, we're a lot friendlier than a bank. You Absolutely. know, we can do things that banks can't do. Uh, we're willing to, to communicate directly with you. And we're the decision makers, you know, and, and uh, a lot of folks don't, don't realize that. So you kind of have to market that message to them and try to do the workouts. Have you guys in the past been doing the workouts yourself or just turning that over to a third party? No, we've turned it over to a third party for the most part. Um, and we, uh, so the, some of the attorneys that we work with, we just guide them as to what we'd like to do. Mm -hmm. But um, we, we do work through third parties. We haven't taken the, the uh, step to actually talk with the borrowers ourselves. Yeah. Well, I still think that's the best way. If you've got people who, 
they are in the business of doing that, leave it to the, leave it to the professionals. Uh, so again, everybody, if you're looking at non-performing uh, notes, again, look at the value of the property, look at the, the story behind that, uh, run the numbers. And, um, you know, once again, this will work out one way or another. She, she stays and ends up paying again, or she's going to have to leave and you get the property and, and uh, you'll make your money, make your money that way. And non-performing notes, um, again, the inventory is a little dry right now for reasons I discussed on, I think on my blog, uh, perhaps another podcast, can't remember, <laughs> but uh, there is a reason for that. It, it will be coming back again, but uh, these are the type of things that you'll uh, you'll be able to see. And for those of you thinking, oh God, I don't want to call somebody and you know, try to tell them to make the payments. You don't have to. That's right. where you outsource all of this to a, uh, to a third party there. So uh, great. I think that one you said almost a 50% ITV at, at, uh, at a minimum. That's right. hard, hard to lose on something like that. Right. And when, when, you know, we look at uh, actually any non-performing inventory that we were even consider buying and Mark and I do own some REOs that we're, that we're selling. Um, but if you can pick them up for 50% or 50 cents on the dollar, uh, it's very difficult to get hurt in that transaction. Yeah, because not uh, you know I, I mentioned note inventory on the non-performing side a little dry spell right now, but um, you know where it's even worse is trying to buy a foreclosure. I mean foreclosures are down way down uh, right now. Inventory very very difficult. Um, right. So these on on your website um, just to clarify uh, with everybody on the website on the very front page it also had properties for sale and those are typical uh, typically properties that you have taken back as a result of buying a, a non-performing note. Is that correct? Uh, no, these particular properties we bought as foreclosure inventory two or three years ago. And okay. um, uh, the company we bought them from uh, went out of business. Mm. They, were, they were actually going to do the marketing for us. So uh, we, we took over the marketing of these properties. They were, they were in bad shape. One of those uh, properties we uh, rehabbed. Mm -hmm. It's in great shape now, but we had to go through the process of learning how to market REOs for sale as well. And we went through a lot of different uh, marketing strategies, uh, Craigslist, Facebook. Um, what we found now is that Zillow is really done pretty well for us as far as getting uh, people interested. The, the property on the right, the one in the Oops. lower right, gotcha. is okay. uh, in Marion, Indiana. And we were trying everything to get uh, people to go into that property and look at it. And I'll tell you, Kevin, it wasn't until we actually advertised it on Zillow um, for sale that we started getting a lot of activity in, hmm. uh, in on that property. No kidding. Um, yeah, and we these, these houses are definitely you know, needing some complete rehabs. Sure. The one on the left uh, in Bay City, Michigan, is completely rehabbed. Mm -hmm. That house is uh, ready, move in ready. Gotcha. Great. Yeah. Perfecto. Excellent. Well, I think we're, yeah, we're, we're out about out of time on, on this. Um, and I, I, I do appreciate you being on and, and uh, going through this. There's so many lessons just hearing other stories. I mean, the, uh, from the advertising to really knowing these deals and thinking through the workouts. I, I think all of this is really, really helpful and informative to, uh, to everybody. Do you have any uh, final thoughts or, or words or, um, Give us a call. If you have any interest in, uh, in buying or selling any notes, uh, give us a call. We'll talk you through the, uh, the process and help you any way we can. Great. And their contact information is right on the website. The website, once again, is equityfirstfunding.com. And very easy to navigate. And uh, what I do like is that they will talk with you. So you will get a, a human being. <laughs> and they will uh, guide you through the process here and, and make it really, really easy. And, and um, I, I love that about you guys. And I appreciate you guys uh, being in the, in the book uh, with me as well. And I'll keep you posted on, on all of that. And uh, if you're on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn as well. So is uh, Deborah, so is Mark. So make sure you follow us uh, there. Uh, also, thank you so much uh, once again, Deborah, and look forward to uh, talking with you soon. Thanks, Kevin. Great. Okay, everybody, that's it for another episode. Uh, and uh, again, I'll have a, another one out for you next week. And uh, might have a, uh, oh, I think I have another guest for you next week. And I'll make sure I do a uh, solo cast 
as uh, as well. Also, um, I've switched up my website a little bit, so I'm going to start adding the dates. We we have uh, scheduled dates for uh, both one day training or excuse me, one hour training. So if you want to get more information live from me about the note business, I'll have those dates for you. We also have uh, about six. Um, three-day event scheduled now and that's looking to grow will be East Coast West Coast and everything in between so uh, again Kevin and uh, subscribe there subscribe to the podcast and I'll keep you informed and hopefully uh, see you at one of our live training events so thank you everybody good talking to you and again don't forget we'll post this as a video as well on YouTube just search for me and you'll find it